Welcome to the Garima Tar show. In today's episode I have with me Alisha Abdullah, the first female racing champion, the first lady president of Audi, first woman racing team owner and entrepreneur. And now she's a politician too. Thanks for joining me Alisha. Such a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you Garima likewise. So are you a bike racer or a car racer? I mean and what's been your motivation to get into motorsports? um uh, my dad's uh, been a um, national racing uh, bike racing champion so um being looking at that from a very young age uh, uh, when mom was pregnant i was going to the race track and you know watch my dad's races so from that i think it was all around bikes and cars and petrol smell you know from that from that from those days and um i mean it just you know when you have someone in your in your family who's a racer it just happens naturally and uh, that's when i got into go karting not uh, bike racing but because of financial uh, restraint i couldn't move into car racing further so i moved my dad had forced me into bike racing i should say <laughs> because uh, of my uh, of, you know we didn't have much uh, money to spend on car racing so yeah it started off with that and then slowly um, you know i moved into i got good sponsors because of my um, podium finishes in bike racing and then I moved to Volkswagen racing um the Polo Cup and then moved on to Formula Car racing and it just going back and forth back and forth. Wow. So, you know, what did it feel like to be, you know, the first female racing champion and all and how did you, you know, handle the success, you know, to be the first racing champion, a woman champion actually in India. So, yes, how, yes. How was um, that feeling? I've never finished first in the national championship till date. I've always finished second and third. So um, it's it's really nice because, but it's uh, trust me. I mean, you're into the sport. You know how it is. It's a very big struggle to uh, win against men. And uh, I think if um, uh, there should be equality in racing also, because there's a lot of uh, partiality happens in racing. so uh, it feels nice but then still uh, there is there's much more to achieve in racing you know racing never ends so uh, i always take you as a role model uh, you know in uh, in motor sports i always look up to you i've always spoken about you to many people and i've always admired you uh, you you're not like me you know i'm i'm someone who's like okay you know what you do this to me i do this to you back you're like you know you're happy if someone comes into you like chalega yaar i will also do that back then you're always with a smile you know so <laughs> something which i really have uh, taken up from thanks thanks so much alisha likewise you are such a wonderful person yourself and and uh, we all get so inspired by so much that you're doing and such incredible work and you also have a racing uh you know academy so and you know to be yes. uh, handling a, the first women's racing academy how did it feel yes. and what's been your you know journey like in that uh, area it's uh, it was very difficult at the beginning because uh, we had i had a lot of mnc companies who was trying to uh, you know come and grab my uh, my whole uh, academy and make sure that they run it Uh, it was a very um, crucial year for me when i opened my women's racing team because i had around 152 to be very precise of uh, women all over india in my racing academy and slowly you know uh, a lot of companies came in and they tried to take in this woman that woman and you know it, it just went on went off so my academy didn't sustain for a long time plus their academy plus their racing team also didn't sustain you know they, we are like indian crabs it was like that you know i don't go you also don't go so women racing in india is so little especially in bike racing and right now they all are racing amongst men but when it came to my academy the plus point was my dad used to race along with them you know we had few guys who used to race along with them because i always follow the strategy always train with men because that's when you become very strong that's what my dad used used to always tell me so we used to put a lot of guys to train with them the guys used to go and push them you know off the tracks so that you become very strong but then you know when all these politics started to come in everything just scattered and um, yeah so i just have a normal racing team where uh, i take in only guys uh, not women because of many issues okay okay great i mean so whatever i mean so i'm sure that there have been tremendous learnings uh, from uh, yeah. this entire journey of yours and uh, i think we all have to face uh, some kind of a challenge in in our uh, work whatever we do and we just have to you know kind of learn to overcome it and you know take it in the stride 
so any incident in in your life uh, or in this career uh, that has happened that has changed the way of your thinking yes uh, after my uh, after my accident and also i know i mean not after that i should say that after i had my uh, car racing team i uh, had a lot of um, uh, you know people coming in and uh, they were targeting me in my racing team and they were because the, everyone had a racing team you know in car racing everyone had their own racing team but when i had my racing team i had around 12 racing cars and i had 12 guys racing so you know how it is right the other team tries to get my racer so i had i faced a lot of challenges and it was a very uh, again it was a very crucial thing because uh, i used to uh, face a lot of um, legalities when it came to on the race track you know um, to the in the officials i used to face uh, them i used to face there was left, left they were like 10 15 uh, people like stabbing me from behind uh, coming across being the only girl trust me there was no family member also my my dad and my mom does it they don't know of course they can't get involved so it was only me and my other team manager who was handling the whole situation it was so tough and uh, thing on me but um, i really thank jk tire for this because i had all my races in coimbatore and um, they supported me a lot you know they supported me a lot and they actually stopped and delayed a race because they knew that i had some issues with the cars and i couldn't get the cars on the grid so you know such um, you know if we have someone putting it on there's always someone lifting you up wow. so i'm very happy with that and that is one of my uh, you know it, it's a very big thing for me you know definitely overcome this very powerful statement uh, that you've made alisha that definitely when somebody is yeah. bringing you there's always somebody lifting you up so we always exactly have to see the positive side and you know the so you know you since you have a you know racing team you've you've done racing yourself so much and you've been in this field you've been so such an experienced driver so looking inside the mind of a winner and so what factors do you think make a good driver discipline persistence and consistency i think all these three things are very important uh, because um, step by step if you are very patient uh, you can achieve a lot in life if you are very persistent in, in in whatever you want of course you will achieve it and you need to be consistent yes it doesn't matter you you won't you won't believe that when i started racing i used to get overlapped three times so when i used to come and cry to my uh, parent my dad they used to tell me you know it's okay you know it's for me it's a it's a shame you know imagine i'm driving and someone shows me a uh, you know the flag a blue flag for for you to give way for someone to oh, you know overtake you so it was very embarrassing for me but then um, my dad always tells me it's okay you feel embarrassed but you know you need to work towards it you cannot keep repeating your mistakes again and again never take failures to your uh, heart and never take um, you know That's victory to your head that is what i believe in so um, i think these are the three important factors in in anything in your life not just sports fabulous uh, very well said so i mean i'm sure you have met uh, you have mentors in your life and you have uh, you know people who you look, look up to your dad uh, yes. is such an inspiration i'm sure in your life so any, yes. any advice or something that anybody has given to you which you think has really benefited you i mean and you apply it even you remember it even today or something um hamilton is uh, my idol and he's always been my idol till date and uh, i remember him uh, when i met him in chennai he had come long long ago and uh, so these are the few words he he told me that uh, you know in life there will be always ups and downs people will always put you down but uh, if you come across the hurdles and thorns in your path you'll be a very successful uh, racer you know he told me few these few words really hit me hard uh, that's when i realized uh, trust me you know being in a in a field where 23 years i've been uh, racing and it's not a easy job because i've cried many times in my uh, room i've gone through a lot but um, and that the achievement speaks for itself so i think uh, he's someone who i really admire till date even though people throw a lot of things on him he's still persistent and consistent consistent in what he does so he's one of my uh, inspiration you know uh, absolutely i i i myself such a huge huge fan of uh, lewis hamilton and he's a such a great athlete and such a wonderful you know human being as well 
So uh, tell me about your journey a little more, uh, Alicia. You have uh, been a racer, then you became, you have an academy, then you got, uh, you got, you became an entrepreneur where you have your own clinic. I mean, where uh, it's an aesthetic yes. clinic and you did so, so many, uh, you know, kind of uh, courses to learn medical uh, yes. courses and all to understand, uh, you know, your clinical stuff and all. And uh, so what led you to, what was, you know, the thought process that led you to become an entrepreneur? Uh, I feel that, uh, see, in uh, in motorsports, women have a very uh, limited lifespan. You no, know, women cannot, uh, we are not like guys, we can race, you know, however long we want to race. So um, we need to choose an alternative career. So uh, this was my alternative career um, doing, uh, you know, I like to, I like beauty altogether. So I made sure that from a very young age, I always used to be very inspired of, uh, of people injecting, you know, how a face can actually change from old to young. You know, it was very different <laughs> for me. So, um, you know, and I always want to take a break from racing because every single uh, year, every uh, day of, uh, of uh, the week, I keep training. So, I was, okay, let's do something different. So that's when I started uh, my uh, aesthetic course and I opened my own clinic and uh, still studying. Uh, so yes, so that is my uh, goal, and it's just like racing, you know. There are so many again, there's so many sharks in 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 this industry. But for me, it's very easy to handle uh, these people. So yes, it's it's always a struggle for everything, and I'm someone who likes to do many things at once, you know. But I want to be good in everything. I don't like to only stick on to something. So I think uh, this is my alternative career. Racing is not everything in my life uh, because we all grow up and we have to have a family end of the day. So. That's how it is. You know, absolutely. Uh, you know, we are all students for life. We have to keep learning and, you know, evolving. And, you know, it's important to have the growth mindset and, you know, keep on upgrading our yeah. skills and also growing in our lives in every sphere. And not just um, in every sphere one uh, needs to evolve. So, I mean, coming back to your journey, I mean, uh, it's, it's so fascinating, actually, uh, Alicia. So from an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, now you've got into politics. So what led you? Uh, I mean, are you fond of politics? How did you get into it? And do you, I mean, do you get any trolling because of that? Do you, does anybody, you know, and how do you handle that? If uh, uh, handle that? Troll? It's very good. It's a very, very good question. It's a very good question. Um, I've been wearing my mask everywhere, wherever I go, because the troll is happening. I'm the hot topic of uh, Tamil Nadu at the moment, uh, because I joined uh, BJP. And uh, the reason I joined is because I help a lot of people. I like helping a lot of uh, people. And during COVID situation, I helped many people I helped. So the maximum I would have helped maybe 500 people during the situation. But now what I, I was, uh, I like to always give back to society. And that's when I realized, okay, so BJP had has given me a platform where um, you know I can inspire and do a lot for thousands of people. So that was my main motive when I entered politics, and uh, it was very clear at the very beginning. And when I entered the polit when I entered the politics, uh, I really thought it's a very uh, it's it's just like my sport. I really thought, but when I entered, it's uh, it's it, I have piranhas around me. I can I can frame it like that. You know, you have to be very very careful, and uh, they told me. Uh, because I don't know the fluency of Tamil very well. So whenever I talk in Tamil, uh, you know, I use a little bit of words go here and there. But um, yeah, it, it was very horrible because everywhere I was in the news and uh, they trolled me big time. And to an extent, I, I was going to quit. I was going to quit uh, saying that, you know, I'm done with politics. Because yeah, see, we all are come here to help people. So uh, that's when my president of BJP, they called me and, you know, they spoke to me. And then, then I realized, okay, my goal and vision is this. Let's get back to the game. And that's when I, this is my main motive. So I'm planning to do a lot for my people in Chennai and uh, bring in sports. So I'm under the sports wing. I'm in the state secretary for sports. So and skill development. So we are training a lot of, uh, we are coming, we have just done Kabaddi League, Modi Kabaddi League. So now we are coming back, coming into motorsports. So we are speaking to the president of FMSI, Mr. Akbar Ibrahim. And we are planning something for women racers uh, in this sector. Okay, fabulous. So, what's what has sport taught you? I mean, uh, what what has been your learnings from uh, this um, this field and the sports actually? Uh, what, it taught what, me discipline. Yeah, yeah. And it taught me discipline, and it taught me 
uh, it taught me to uh, be very focused in what i want sports is a way of life i always tell people and uh, it taught me a lot it taught me everything in life you know uh, what i couldn't learn in my school i've learned it from racing because the discipline um, you know your uh, your focus is very important in racing being a racer every, everyone can be a racer i mean you know about this you know but being being in that uh, you know that mind frame and being su- successful not many people can so that's when i uh, i learned many things in in uh, racing and i feel that it applies in everything in my in my day if i have to be 10 o'clock anywhere 9:50 i am there so you know that's when that's how it is right if you do, if you don't go early you get fine so i've been so used to uh, that and uh, i always uh, think that you know uh, we are here to do good and uh, you know be good and do good super so what's your uh, message to the upcoming young athletes um uh, keep your head always you know uh, high and keep your leg to the floor i always tell people that because i think uh women a lot of women racers at this point of time uh just they they win a race amongst girls and they they feel that they won the world championship you know i think it's very wrong the way women racers are going in india their the whole mindset i think people should change the attitude of how they see because india is still lagging in racing if you say racing i i watched w series live i uh, watched people racing women racing live their level of racing is some other some other level indian women racers are even the guys are very you know we are here and they are there so people should uh, train more with the men and they should they should focus on what they want i feel that there should not be any women's class they should always be i was talking to even akbar uh, uh, uncle and i was telling him please don't have women's class make sure the girls go with the men and race that's when your the motor sports will definitely improve in india we can have many women or even guys representing india in the world championships super super thank you so much so uh, there are some rapid fire questions like you know quick quick one yeah. line answers uh, so are we are you ready for that rapid. yeah sure <laughs> cool okay uh, your favorite quote live and let live your role model uh louis hamilton documentary film that inspired you the most um the documentary film uh pele the footballer pele that was a very good uh, i like the movie a lot it inspired me a lot craziest thing in racing craziest thing in racing is um i raced bikes in the morning and uh, in the afternoon in kwambito i used to come back drop the bike and get into the car so i had no clue <laughs> i was so young that day i at that those times i i had no clue where i was going and what i was doing so i was really crazy back then okay one hidden talent uh one hidden talent i can cook and eat at the same time you can cook come on that's a talent oh, you can cook and you can eat at the same time <laughs> <laughs> okay fabulous what's your biggest dream my biggest dream is um i look want a lot of women to represent india in the field of motor sports and uh, definitely i want um motor sports should be always number 1 in the world that is my dream i hopefully i i you know i contribute something to the in motor sports fraternity uh best racing memory uh best racing memory is when i um, broke my leg i uh, after my post surgery uh, the next day i went training and uh, the same week i went for racing my car was uh, all the four tires all the four all the two tires were punctured and i came second with a broken car with uh, 30 guys behind me so that was my the best time of my life fabulous oh my yeah. <laughs> amazing okay. i know i can i can send you some show you some photos yeah yeah please do please do <laughs> most embarrassing moment should i say that okay my most embarrassing moment is i wanted to be very badly and i had to come my podium finish was there i dropped the car and I ran to the restroom so uh, that was my most emb- because everyone seen me everyone was there when when they seen me run to the toilet <laughs> imagine my helmet i'm running to the toilet <laughs> that was very embarrassing but as a mix nature's all is all uh favorite race car or bike uh my race car uh i mean 
be honest, I like all the race cars, but I like like the Lamborghini uh, a lot on the race track. And uh, the race bike is uh, definitely a Ducati because they are really quick and fast. Um, yeah, these are the two things which I really like. Proudest accomplishment so far. Every accomplishment, uh, me standing on the podium with two guys besides me, is my accomplishment. <laughs> it takes a lot to stand up. Trust me, yeah, it takes yeah, a lot. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, superb, amazing. And with this, we come to the end of the show. Thank you, Alicia, for joining me in this absolutely amazing session. <laughs> thank you so much, Garima. And uh, thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host, Garima Aftar. If you like this episode, then subscribe to my podcast for more new episodes and a deeper dive into the world of motivation and winning psychology. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.